Okay, let's talk about the OAE, and that stands for the Ohio Assessments for Educators. So we're going to be uh, specifically talking about the elementary education assessment, and uh, even more specifically, the math that's going to be on it. Okay, so if you're watching this video, I assume that you are maybe preparing for this exam, so that's excellent. Or, and, or maybe you have some other interest in it. Hopefully you're not just bored and you said, hey, I want to check out the OAE elementary education math just to kill some time. If that's the case, I would strongly recommend that you go just kind of surf around on the internet and find something maybe a little bit more interesting. Okay, so that was my weak attempt of trying to be funny. Let me go ahead and introduce myself. So my name is John. I am the founder of Tablet Class Math. I am a middle and high school math teacher, but uh, Tablet Class is a system that I've created over many, many years um, to, um, it's basically an online instruction platform. Um, I have many, many courses um, on it. Uh, I think for Tablet Class, I've been building this out for maybe like 15 years. So I have thousands of students all over the world that use my program. And actually, before we get going, um, I have an OAE elementary education math prep course. I'll leave the link to that in the description of this video if that's something you might want to check out. But uh, anyways, uh, what I want to do here is kind of give you a little pop quiz to kind of see how ready you might be for the elementary uh, education math uh, subsection for the, uh, the OAE. Okay, now, but no means is this is inclusive, like, hey, if you get this problem right, then hey, you're all ready to go. But I want to talk a little bit about um, the exam and then we'll kind of um, mess around with this problems, kind of see where you're at, kind of at least give you some feedback on your math uh, skills, and then uh, we'll call it a wrap for this video. All right, so the first thing I want to say is for all elementary um, assessments, um, and uh, by the way, Okay, being a, a middle and high school math teacher, you know, I know what it's like to take these certification exams. I have a degree in mathematics, okay, not a math, not math education, a uh, degree in mathematics and a master's degree. And for my certification exam to teach at that level, you know, it required a lot of effort. And if I didn't study, okay, even though I had far more, you know, uh, it took far more advanced mathematics than what I was going to be teaching, I still need to need still needed to study for these assessments. So you can't go by and say, oh, yeah, I'm good with math. I was really good in high school and college. No, no, you have to study for these exams. And specifically for the elementary education exams, you might think, and I used to think this too, I'd be like, oh, elementary education, well, that's going to be easy. It's going to be like basic you know, how to add, multiply whole numbers and place value and fractions and stuff. Well, yes, some of that stuff for sure is going to be on uh, these assessments, but there's also a decent amount of algebra, geometry, like high school level math. Okay, so if you weren't aware of that, really strongly suggest that you really take a look at what's going to be on this assessment on the math component of it. And, um, you know, if you didn't do well in math, if you feel like, you know, you're you're weak in math, then just, you know, get your bearings, get a good um, program, good study program going, and then go from there, okay? But you can pass the OAE elementary education math subtest, math section, okay? Just, you need a good plan, all right? So that's why I do things like build um, uh, math courses to help, uh, help you out if that's something you want to take a look at. But let's go ahead and take a look at this practice problem. So this is algebra, okay? And I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of a hint of uh, what I want you to do, and then I'm going to solve it, and then we'll go from there. All right, so what I have is some algebra stuff here. Hopefully this means something to uh, most of you, but I want you to simplify this expression, okay? Simplify. So I don't want to say anything more than that. Of course, I'm going to explain all this in perfect uh, detail here in a second, but I want you to simplify it. So just Think about that word, simplify, you know, clean it up, make it as simple as possible. So if you think you, you uh, know what to do, okay, I would pause the video and go ahead and do it. It shouldn't take you too long if you know what to do. Okay, now for those of you who want like a hint, I'm going to give you a hint, okay, before I solve it. So I kind of, you know, like to encourage you to do it on your own before I do it. So what does that word simplify mean? Let me just see if I can spell it. I'll probably misspell it. Simp. Simplify. Okay, hopefully I spelled it correctly. All right, so simplify means to make it more simple. Okay, so if there's an opportunity to make this thing, this expression simpler, that's what we want to do. Now, what you're thinking about, what you, what you should be thinking about here in algebra is combining like terms. Okay, so you want to 
do some stuff you want to combine like terms so if you've heard that you know uh, terminology before combine like terms that's what you're going to be doing okay so let's go ahead and write this down so you want to simplify I told you that means you want to combine like terms I'm going to even give you another hint you're going to be using the distributive property okay distributive property all right so you're going to have to use the distributive property for this problem you're going to have to do some combining of like terms and if you do this all correctly okay you'll be able to simplify the expression all right so that's about as much um, in terms of uh, hints that I can kind of give you so if you can't get it from these kind of uh, hints then you know I'm gonna go ahead and solve it now don't panic um, believe me you did this math somewhere in your career because if you're taking uh, you know this assessment this means that you you know have a college degree or you're finishing college or to have a degree already like I said definitely got into college means that hey you've taken this before but you just don't remember so no big deal let's go ahead and go through it all right so first thing we're gonna do is use the distributive property okay this is the first thing we need to do in this a particular expression so the distributive property is um, it's a property that essentially allows us to multiply in a different way. Let me show you a quick example. I'm going to do this, but let me show you um, a quick example. So let's say I wanted to say uh, take 3 and multiply it by uh, 12. Okay, so 3 times 12, hopefully most of you out there are like, oh, that's 36. Okay, 3 times 12, 36. Perfect. So I can write it this way, right? 3 times 12 or 3 times 12 3 times 12 or 3 times 12 okay so we all agree that the answer is 36 perfect okay so what's the distributive property well it's a super super powerful it's one of my you know I don't know if you can have a favorite property but I really like the distributive property if it you know yeah I think it is one of my favorite properties but anyways what is it well it's a way that we can uh, multiply in a kind of in a different uh, manner so check this out so here I have 3 times 12 okay again now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write 12 but I'm gonna write it in a little bit different way okay I'm gonna write it this way 3 12 let's say let's say that's uh, 10 plus 2 okay so 10 plus 2 is what it's 12 so I just wrote this problem in a different way okay I didn't do anything different well the distributive property says that when you are multiplying a number like three okay and there's some parentheses and a sum or a difference in other words you're adding or subtracting some numbers you can do the following you can take that number on the outside let you go like this three times ten is what well three times ten is thirty now this is I'm adding right so that's plus and I have three times two is what that's six and 30 plus 6 is 36 so I get the same answer but I did it in a different way why because 12 okay we wrote this as a sum now I could write this as 3 times 6 plus 6 okay that's 12 as well right so 3 times 6 is what 18 plus 3 times 6 is another 18 18 18 36 okay so you really want to get to know the, uh, the distributive property. It's absolutely just critical in algebra. All, I mean, all, everything is critical when you learn, but the distributive property is one of the most widely used properties in math. So now, how does it relate to what's going on here? Well, I have some x's, some variable stuff. Now I said with sum and differences, this is a, a subtraction situation going on. Here's an addition situation. So I can use the distributive property to kind of simplify this part of the problem so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take negative 2 I'm going to multiply it by 4x now little warning here if you start getting lost and you're like eh, I'm struggling a little bit don't worry about it just use this video as feedback okay but if you don't understand what I'm talking about here that's definitely an indicator that you're not really ready for this assessment okay you, you really have to up your math math skills uh, considerably but you can do that okay it's just it's just going to take a plan and some review and a good you know um, material course all right so negative 2 times 4x is what that's going to be negative 8x all right now I, I need to distribute it's a distributive property what's that word 
distribute mean to you? Or distributive, right? Means pass out. Like, hey, this goes here, this goes here. I'm going to distribute this thing out. So this negative two, I'm going to distribute over to this negative one. Now this, you might think, oh, do I multiply it by a one, the positive one, or is this a negative one? Well, this this right here, this is the sign of this number, so it's going to be a negative one. So negative two times a negative one is a positive two. Okay, positive two. Now another way I could have thought of this, and this I recommend this to my students, is the following. Okay, so if you have a subtraction sign here. Just turn this into a plus and then carry that negative over to that little number right there so it makes it easier to see. So negative 2 times 4x is negative 4x and negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Okay, so hopefully you understand that. Now here, maybe I made this problem a little bit more eh, tricky than I should have, but that's okay here. So this is a, a subtraction operator, so I could do the same thing with doing this plus negative. So I can go like plus negative. Now you're like, well, negative what? There's nothing there. Well, anytime you have a negative like this, negative, negative 3x plus 5, well, what's there, okay, invisibly is a 1, okay? It's not 0, and it's just not, not like invisible. So even if you had an expression like negative of a negative 3, Okay, this this negative sign we can kind of interpret as the opposite of a negative three. What's the opposite of a negative three? Hey, if I had negative three and I want the opposite of it, well, isn't that a positive three? Well, this is the same. Technically, this is negative. Remember, I told you there's always a one here. A negative one times a negative three is gonna be a positive three. Okay, so just because all this isn't there, let's kind of go back to our original uh, expression here. Now, this is what it was, you need to understand that, okay, I can write this as plus negative one, or think of it that way. Okay, now I can use the distributive property. So negative one, let's put this as a plus sign here, negative one times a negative three x is going to be a positive three x. Negative one times uh, five is going to be a plus negative five. Now, <clears throat> I'm kind of like really kind of breaking all this down. With experience, you'll uh, you know get better at this. Okay, so hopefully you understand everything that I talked about. So now we use the distributive property. So now we got rid of the parentheses and we kind of see these numbers and terms individually. So what I'm going to do now is to combine like terms. So what's like? Well, x I have a three x and a negative eight x. I can combine them. I don't want to go into a whole lesson on how you how you know what terms are like or not like, okay? And I can certainly combine numbers. So I have a positive 2 and a negative 5. So let's go ahead and do that. Negative 8x plus a positive 3x is a negative 5x. And 2, a positive 2 plus a negative 5 will give me a negative 3. Okay, so just in case I don't make any errors, I'm not going to go back and double check myself. Uh, everything looks pretty good here. Let me go ahead and just, yeah, let me double check myself real quick. Negative 2, 4x, that's negative 8x. That's positive 2. Negative 3x, that was negative times a negative, so that's positive. And this negative times that positive 5, that's negative. Okay, negative 8x. Sorry for thinking out loud. I just want to make sure I give you the right answer. Okay, this looks good. So this would be the simplified version of what we started out originally okay now what would you want to carry around in your pocket the, all this mess or something simpler okay it's just a, this is the idea okay <laughs> it's like a tape measure here you have a tape measure that you use like this we don't we don't want to carry it in its simple in a, its non simplest form right we don't drag out the tape tape measure or anything right we want to like keep it nice and tidy and easy to kind of like deal with and that's what we do in algebra okay so this is the most simplest form of this. So simplifying is important, okay? It's just like reducing a fraction. If you have 30 over 60, would you want to deal with that number or would you just want to deal with the number one half, okay, the fraction one half, right? So you do need to know how to simplify, but um, along with this, okay, distributive property, combining like terms, these are all skills you're going to need to know how to do, not only to 
to deal with expressions, but to solve equations. And this is kind of fundamental basic algebra, stuff that you're absolutely for sure going to need to know for the OAE elementary education uh, assessment math section. So that's quite a mouthful there. But let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, so if you like my teaching style, I've been on YouTube for well, at the time of this video, like 12 years, pretty proud of uh, all the work that I've done on there. It's just something I've been doing for many, many years. I think at the time of this, I had like 650 plus videos, all types of math, algebra, just geometry, this, that, everything else. So if you like my teaching style, you definitely um, you know, check out my playlist. I can, uh, you know, you'll definitely get a lot of help there. But my best work um, is going to be in my course. So I'll leave the link to my OE uh, education uh, elementary education uh, course below. When I make these courses, by the way, I do a lot of research on the actual course and I kind of build a custom curriculum to it. So it's a lot of work and my best videos and content are going to be there. So anyways, I want to check that out if you're interested. And if you like the video, I definitely appreciate a thumbs up and let me know uh, uh, what you think. I mean, are you new to teaching? Are you um, struggling with math? Are you taking this exam again because of the math section? By the way, don't uh, you may not know this, but you know many, many teachers have to take several exams, you know, or take their exams more than once. That's not uncommon. So if that's you know your boat, uh, you're not alone. Okay, so don't quit for sure. Just you know go back, like learn, you know, get uh, uh, some lessons learned from the first exam. By the way, too, let me just tell you right now, any certification exam you take immediately, I always give this advice to teachers. Uh, especially new teachers, once you take that exam, or even people who take the SAT or ACT, GMAT, GRE, it doesn't make a difference. Any exam, you take that exam, when you leave that exam room, the, what I strongly suggest you do, you just have like your notebook there, your pen or, or whatever, your pencil, just write everything you can remember about that exam. Like what kind of questions were on it, you know, like how you felt, lessons learned, what you thought you did good, this and that, just write everything like that you, that just occurred. Get it out of your head so you don't, you're using your memory. And then when you get your actual exam results, you kind of like look at what you thought about the exam to the results and then go from there. If you pass, great. You know, you'll be able to maybe help somebody else by giving some good advice. If you didn't pass, you can kind of think about how you thought you did and, you know, and be like, wow, my results weren't that. And you can make some adjustments. OK, but uh, anyways, that's a good habit to get into. But uh, uh, so anyways, like again, teaching for those who are new to teaching, it's a challenging career. And today with the pandemic and the virtual school stuff, listen, one day, hopefully things are going to get back to a more normal state where you're going to be in the classroom. But you're going to have to stick with these things and these certification exams. You're going to have to put a lot of effort in to pass them. OK, they're professional exams and uh but, you know, for myself, even though I taught middle and high school math, you know, the elementary exams are no, like, less, you know, uh, easier, right? Just, I think a lot of teachers might think, oh, elementary, just because the kids are younger, it's easier. Yeah, not <laughs> not so much. I taught high school math, and those students were like, that was challenging, but I've taught middle school, and the middle school, in a lot of ways, was even more challenging. So you can't make those associations. You're going to have to take every exam you take. Um you know, and give it the respect it um, deserves. But I hope this video helps you out and uh, definitely appreciate your time. And uh, with that being said, good luck and have a great day.